Welcome to the Find Your Voice, Change Your Life podcast with psychologist Dr. Doreen Downing. Listen in as Doreen interviews people who felt they didn't have a voice or who suffered extreme speaking anxiety. You'll hear stories about how they struggled to speak up, what they did to find their authentic voice, and the confidence they now feel to speak up and make an impact. If you want to get started right away to find your voice, download Doreen's free seven step guide to fearless speaking at Doreen7steps.com. And now, here is Doreen. Hi, this is Dr. Doreen Downing. I'm host of the Find Your Voice, Change Your Life podcast. I have a wonderful surprise for everyone. Today is my 100th episode. And I am inviting my husband, Earl Downing, to join <laughs> us. <laughs> so we we have a good show planned and we uh, are excited about you listening to not only how Earl found his voice, but what that has meant for me, <laughs> your host here today. Uh, hi, Earl. <laughs> Hello, Dr. Downing. Good to be with you. Uh-huh. You sent me a bio like most guests do and I want to talk about you first so that people get introduced to you before we have our conversation sounds good you grew up in a family of eight surrounded by siblings and led by a big athletic mother who loved to play games with her kids and you transitioned into the rec director for the family and you've been that ever since in an ever broadening family. Along the way, you picked up a degree in English from Yale, worked a variety of occupations, cab driver, rider, blackjack player, sailboat deliverer, before settling into a technical sales career. But all through, you maintained a love for recreation and sports which led you into your current incarnation as a track and field coach. Ah, big breath. Anything you want to add to that, Earl? Um, well, the uh, variety of occupations, uh, things that I actually did through my um, 20s and into my 30s was a lot um, more diverse and uh, involved than that. Um, but through it all, I maintained a kind of a commitment to fitness and trained athletically at a pretty high level all the way through. And um, that has kind of presented me into this sort of later part of life uh, in very, very good physical condition for going forward. Um, you know, I'm a, I'm a 74 year old with a 20 year plan and I, I intend to live out all of those years productively. Mm -hmm. I can say for folks who are only listening and can't see you that you are tremendously fit <laughs> as a, a 70 year old man. And I, uh, I, it, it is fun to be here on the call with you. I almost said, and I love every inch of you. So I might as well say it because <laughs> people get to, <laughs> people get to hear our relationship and how much we've uh, loved each other from the very start. And I do with my guests always ask them to go back and it's about voice. But before I do that, as I said, the very start, I knew Earl at, in grammar school. We were what, 10, 11, 12 years old mm -hmm. and went on into high school and knew each other then. And it's something to talk about our story, which would be for a whole nother podcast, because today is about you, Earl, and you feeling like there must have been some kind of oh, struggle to find your, your true voice earlier on. So any snapshots of your early life and um, how that might have related to having a voice or not having a voice? Well, um, snapshots, certainly. Um, I was uh, at the kind of the, um, the dawn of awareness, um, looking back uh, to that, that point. Um, I was uh, essentially a, a non-speaking little baby child and just, just how I was. And I, I was you know, kind of like a 
a lapel camera going through life, you know, crawling and then toddling and rising up into a, being a child, really not saying much of anything, and particularly around my father. And you know, what I found out later uh, that the, this kind of the conditions that created me as this essentially um, mute child was that um, my father, I was, a, I was a, a colicky baby and cried a lot. I had stomach pain and, and was allergic to milk and that was pretty much all I was eating. So um, I, I made a lot of noise and uh, my father was a wonderful guy, but he was very easily frustrated. Mm -hmm. And he would, um, it, it turns out that he would shake me into silence. And, um, you know, this is, you know, much later in life, I find this out. He said, I really, I never hit you, but I sure shook the hell out of you. And so um, when I would make, you know, you know, kind of speaking from my, my essence, which was an, an essence of pain and discomfort, um, that, was, that was kind of shaken into silence. And then I, you know, came forth into the world of sound and speech with, um, with that kind of wall between me and uh, letting out what was inside. Hmm. I just had. Uh, thank you for pointing uh, to that moment of life and how that might have uh, affected you early on. I just had an insight. I, I we do know each other so well, but I had this insight about you picking later years English as your major, and that's all about and how much you love to write, so that your voice must have been coming out in your writing. Well, um, yeah, that's uh, I hadn't I hadn't put that together, but um, you're you're known for doing that in a pretty adept ad ad way, so. I'll, uh, you know, I'll agree with you on that. I yeah. think that's, that's revelatory. Yeah. Finding your voice. And that's, that's to listeners. There's all sorts of ways our voice comes through, especially if it's hampered in one area and let's say like speech, but maybe in writing it comes out or music is another way that I've heard people find their voice singing even uh, when they don't feel comfortable on stage having a conversation with the audience but as soon as they start playing those notes it just they're in their zone so yeah that was that was fun to put that together well uh, so let's move on in your life and you're through school let's say high school and uh, college those years about becoming more who you are or who you thought you were? Well, starting um, when I um, kind of began, began to, to speak up um, was um, it kind of uh, sports related. Mm -hmm. uh, sports, uh, which in my family was, was kind of preordained that that was, that was going to be something that, um, that I did and uh, was, was going to be a major part of my life. And sports are loud. Sports are life in the loud lane. There's, and it's okay to be, um, in certain sports, it's okay to like hit things. In certain sports, it's okay to hit people. Uh, and in all sports, um, it's okay to be loud. I mean, you can't be loud, say, in golf when somebody's trying to, you know, sink that four-foot putt. But it's okay to shout and uh, cheer and jeer and um, uh, shout encouragement uh, and to just kind of overflow with, um, uh, with your, what the, the joy that you have inside or the anxiety that you have inside to let that out in a big way. So that was very um, uh, kind of therapeutic for me. And I really took to that in the sports that I played. I was a very loud kid um, and it uh, it kind of it, it 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 freed it freed my my voice and I was really you know speaking and shouting and cheering from the essence. I mean it was it was the joy that I felt was was genuine and out it came. So that kind of broke broke me open and got got my essence um, yeah, in touch with the rest of the world really more than anything. 
Oh my goodness. That feels like the pent up little baby cry scream yeah, yeah. <laughs> finally got released and had a safe place to do that. That's, yeah. that's a wonderful connection to make. Well, we knew each other in high school. And one of the places that you, you stood out was leadership uh, being, you know, class president and um, being somebody who felt like he was on his way to being maybe in government or something because it seemed like you were one of the smartest kids in, in school and uh, there was a lot of respect for you. You were on the football team. And so there was a lot of ways in which you did uh, find your voice, I feel, that you did express the essence of who you are in sports, as you said, but also uh, as a leader, Earl, I feel like that was one of your gifts early on and and still is. <laughs> well, um, I'll, I'll agree with you on that. Um, yeah, the I was, you know, we, you know, high school is such a is is such a wild ride. You know, you come in as such a child, and you leave uh, as as an aspiring adult, and certainly feeling feeling that you're very adult. Um, the um, you know, I, I did kind of have a a a a, a coming out when my uh, at the end of my junior year, I ran for the next year student body president, and going up, I was running against a very very popular. Uh, you know, the, the, my high school had a very strong swim team, you know, returning Olympic uh, gold medalists. And uh, it was a very uh, esteemed uh, segment of our student population. And one of those swimmers was my opponent. Very well, very well connected, very popular and had, had a big uh, organization behind him to kind of propel him into this student body presidency. And I was, you know, kind of on my own, no organization, no signs, no anything. And uh, coming up to like the, uh, there was a, a student assembly, which is gonna be in front of, you know, the uh, 2000 students where uh, kind of speeches were gonna be made by the candidates. And I, I kind of realized going in that this was kind of my shot to, um, uh, to uh, you know, have the, have the audience all at once and be able to um, deliver. And that's exactly what happened. Uh, it was, it was really not, what I've what I've come to learn is the, um, the, the most powerful, most effective, most real way of being. Just opening up in the moment my essence and sharing that with the essence that I connect with in other people. This was uh, a, a planned and rehearsed uh, performance that was just uh, was just great, and it took me, uh, you know into a, 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 an, an unbeatable lead in the election. And it, it felt, uh, the, the whole process felt so wonderful to me to, to prepare and to feel prepared and to get up and to deliver and, um, uh, and then to reap the benefits of, of being able to communicate so effectively. So that was, that was kind of a, a real springboard uh, up and out and forward into you know, kind of grown up life, feeling that I could, um, I could deliver uh, in the moment in front of large, large groups effectively. Mm, wonderful. Do you remember any phrases? You know, I, I, I don't. I remember talking about, uh, 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 you know, getting more trash cans because, you know, uh, litter was a problem at our school. And I guaranteed <laughs> that the football team was going to be very, very successful, and uh, that makes for a good, uh, a good community environment, and, and we did that. And, um, I can't really recall uh, anything, anything specific, but I, re I recall the the feeling of being kind of on a on a wave, uh, being kind of uh, surfing forward, and you know, kind of just kind of going through going through the process and the emotions and realizing at the, at the time that I was actually pulling it off. Yeah. Strength, inner strength. Yeah. I remember my campaign, uh, don't be mean, <laughs> vote for Doreen. <laughs> <laughs> and I did yes. vote for Doreen. Yes. Well, it feels like, uh, 
we, we might as well just say one other little personal data point in our high school is that we double dated. We weren't sweethearts then. We um, had friends that uh, my best friend was your girlfriend and uh, that's mm -hmm. how my boyfriend was your best friend. So that's how we got to know each other and had a lot of fun early on in life. And I think that that was really something something good to be foundational for our relationship later on because you went off to Yale and I went off to UC Berkeley and our lives uh, were separate for many, many years until a 20 year reunion when I went, wow, this person has really matured. <laughs> yeah. Which I, which I needed to, and we both realized that. Yeah. I mean, I, I may have kind of secretly aspired to a relationship with you in high school, but um, you know, I, I realized that I really was not quite uh, in your league and I had a lot of, of growing to do a lot of, um, a lot of things to work out before um, I was going to be acceptable to you. And, and I realized that. But life kept us apart. Uh, and it wasn't until um, several or many more years and getting together much later in life. Uh, and there was, I don't know how much here to go into what this means, but uh, I I was not married and you were in a different city and you were married and uh, we didn't start our relationship until much, much later. And I would say that partly why I held off myself from marriage was because, well, I won't go into my own early life history, but I was well protected and defended and I didn't need anybody and nobody's going to get close to me, especially a guy. So <laughs> it, it, took you a while to say knock knock hello Doreen <laughs> and um, so that's that was the beginning of our relationship later in life and but I think that this whole finding your voice idea about um, not only finding your voice but listening to people and what their essence is saying and I feel like your essence has been saying to me I love you Doreen and letting the walls around my heart melt. So the power of finding your voice is one thing, but the other is the power of letting voices, positive voices, love in is also part of what I think is so important about the work that I do. So mm -hmm. thank you, Earl, for coming <laughs> into my life. Uh, let's, let's, um, we have, we have just a limited time today, and I think people have gotten a sense of you and how you found your voice. But I think that the you mentioned being in technical sales for a while, and of course, you are who you are as a as a motivator and a somebody who helps people make good decisions, like buy your product. But it feels like later on when you've actually I mean, I've really lined yourself up with voice. And that has to do with who you in your essence, in your heart, who in your gut, who you've always meant to be, which is this track coach, this working with athletes. Mm -hmm. Well, the um, uh, to, to go back and just, just visit uh, tech, the, the technical sales uh, kind of 20-year uh, uh, episode. Um, that was certainly uh, a, a communication, a quality communication based existence, um, and um, which I was I was very, very good at. Um, and in terms of um, I, I, I really, truly cared about the business uh, and the, the owners of the business that I was presenting my um, mm -hmm. uh, my 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 product and services to. And that um, I could, I was really, really good at communicating because it was honest and real, and they felt it and wanted to do business with me. Um, and it was at the same time a, 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 a very, very cutthroat environment. And there'd be uh, people in uh, uh, participants in meetings 
that were just lying in the weeds, ready to jump out and get you because they had a different agenda and they had a different, a different company that they wanted uh, this company to do business with. So it was um, in, in, in opening yourself up and opening my essence up, uh, it, was, it, it was really kind of exposing vulnerabilities that, that could, be, could be jumped on. And so it was, it was a um, kind of a real minefield uh, communication existence that I was um, uh, very good at, but it was it was not the, the the purity and cleanliness and and just wonderful loving connections that I have now in working with the the clientele, you know my my current clientele, which are. 13 to 18 year old um, boys and girls who become young men and women and um, yeah, you have I wanna, a up. yeah I, I want to hear more about that I'm going to take a quick break so people can find out more how they can get access to the seven secrets to finding their voice and I'll be right back I I really want to help have people learn more about what it is that you do in being with these youngsters and helping them become more of who they can be. If you want to get started right away to find your voice, download Doreen's free seven step guide to fearless speaking at doreen 7 Hi, we're back with my husband, Earl Downing, that we are <laughs> We are showcasing today and not only our relationship, but how Earl had his own early struggle and how that happened with the relationship with his father, who has, as Earl said, has uh, shook, shook him into silence. But Earl has, in many, many ways that he talked about earlier in the show, found his true voice and now we are going to hear more about what he's doing so that his voice is an inspiration to young athletes, young people. Well, um, let me say that it is to, if, to really trust and believe in your, your own essence and the purity of what you have inside. And, and to not have really any fear or trepidation uh, in, uh, of bringing that out uh, real time in every situation is a, a, a real key. And um, this, the success that I've had working with these kids and it's, um, you know, the, the feedback from, you know, the kids and their parents has been just uniformly uh, uh, superb that how do you how do you get them to do this um, she's never run a 400 in her life and now she wants to do multiple uh, you know she wants to put a headlight on so she can do it at night um, and uh, and just the getting getting the kids connected with how good they can be and making that real for them and then Knowing the, the, the mechanical steps, uh, the, the, the sequence and intensities of, of activities that will actually get them from where they are to where they aspire to be um, is um, it, it just a, a wonderful, wonderful uh, uh, environment and life to inhabit. And I would, I would say that the... Uh, like one of the real keys to, to success in communicating with these kids is to really connect with their essence mm. and to be um, open and um, really non-judgmental. And you can, you can feel, you, you can feel when the kids settle in and accept that the fact that they are accepted. And they're not being judged. And um, then the, the the true, deep, meaningful, actionable communication begins to flow. And once it's flowing, it it really doesn't stop. And it's um, just a, a a wonderful existence to be in here at you know kind of the beginning of the of the second half of life, say. 
Uh-huh. Yeah, I like the way you said that they start out as these um, when they when you first start working with them, they're young little like saplings, but then they are at the end of their high school career, they're aspiring adults. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and and I also realized that because our listeners are people who talk about or are struggling with voice, that what you're talking about with these athletes is a performance. They actually have to get out on a stage called a track and do something, perform. And that a lot of what we're talking about today and what you've just said to our listeners is what it might take for them to feel the the courage and the passion. And it sounds like the necessity of finding somebody who who can see that in you, the the uh, the strength inside of you that already exists, the beauty that exists, the uh, I'll just use a bigger word, the magnificence. And I feel that you do that in your coaching and I do that in my uh, work with people too. So mm-hmm. that seeing what's best and what's possible, I think, what is the possibility and holding that belief for people. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So we're coming to the end. There's many, there seems like many directions I could go in. I want to see if there's anything you feel that's coming up that you want to uh, say to listeners today. I would say um, get, get to your passion in life uh, as, as soon as you possibly can. And uh, that is uh, that is also to say that the later in life that you get to your passion, uh, the more passionate it will be. So, you know, if you're not there yet, don't waste a lot of time and energy in lamenting the fact that you're still in some kind of a prison cell. Because what's coming when you walk out and into the sunlight is... Uh, is the later that happens, the more intense and the brighter that sunlight will be. So uh, get there, but if you're not there, uh, uh, don't sweat it. It's coming. Wow. The continuation of being able to live my life next to you and be inspired every single day. Thank you. Thank you, Earl. You bet. Great to be here. I love your podcasts. Uh, you're you're like um, you're you're Terry Gross on on uh, on steroids, <laughs> in a in a in a good way. Uh, thank so you. thanks for thanks for being you. Thank you for being with us today for this episode of Find Your Voice, Change Your Life. Each person during interviews shares what has helped them find their voice. You can learn from these guests and find your voice so you can be confident to speak up and speak out. And remember to download Doreen's free seven-step guide to fearless speaking at Doreen7steps.com. We hope you enjoyed the show and we'll return next time. Until then, goodbye for now.